Throughout the tapestry of human history, the twinkling stars and celestial bodies that embellish the night sky have aroused profound wonder and inquiry. From prehistoric times, humans have gazed upwards, yearning to decipher the mysteries of the universe and seeking to define their place within this vast expanse. As eons passed, this celestial wonderment has evolved from simple mythological explanations to rigorous scientific understanding. The narrative of how humanity's perspective shifted from an Earth-centric universe to recognizing our orbit around the Sun reveals a journey of discovery, challenge, and enlightenment. From the 4th century BC into the late Middle Ages, the geocentric model dominated human understanding of the cosmos. This perspective, rooted in the observations and philosophies of ancient civilizations, particularly the Greeks, posited Earth as an immovable point at the center of the universe. Stars, planets, and other celestial bodies were believed to revolve around Earth in intricate patterns. Aristotle, a figurehead of 4th century BC Greek philosophy, strongly advocated for this Earth-centric model, merging observational claims with philosophical reasoning. His influence was immense, and his teachings on the topic were considered definitive for centuries. The geocentric view received further refinement in the 2nd century AD by the Alexandrian astronomer Ptolemy. His detailed system, often referred to as the Ptolemaic system, utilized epicycles to explain the peculiar motions of planets, especially their retrograde movements. This model, though complex, was able to predict planetary positions with reasonable accuracy and became the accepted cosmological system in the Western world. This perspective on the universe was not just a matter of science, it was deeply intertwined with religious and philosophical beliefs of the time further cementing its acceptance. It was deeply rooted, and challenges to this model were often met with skepticism or outright hostility. The geocentric model's dominance continued until the Renaissance era when new observations and evolving paradigms began to hint at a universe where Earth was not the central stage. In the Annals of Ancient Astronomy, Claudius Ptolemaeus, commonly known as Ptolemy, stands out as one of the most influential figures. Living in Alexandria, Egypt, during the 2nd century AD, he synthesized and expanded upon the astronomical knowledge of his time in his magnum opus, the Almagest. The Almagest offered a comprehensive presentation of the geocentric model, positing Earth at the center of a grand celestial mechanism. What set Ptolemy's model apart was its intricate system of cycles and epicycles. In simple terms, while planets orbited the Earth, the primary cycle, they also moved in smaller circles, epicycles, as they completed these primary orbits. This was Ptolemy's ingenious solution to account for the irregular and sometimes retrograde motions of planets observed from Earth. For instance, Mars occasionally appears to move backward in the sky relative to the stars before resuming its typical eastward motion. The concept of epicycles readily explained such apparent anomalies. Ptolemy's model wasn't just a theoretical construct. It provided a practical tool for predicting the positions of celestial bodies and was thus immensely valuable for various purposes, including navigation and the casting of horoscopes, a popular practice of the time. Moreover, the Ptolemaic system's durability is a testament to its accuracy and sophistication. Even though it was built on the mistaken premise that the Earth was the center of the universe, it was able to make accurate predictions of planetary positions for over a thousand years. This unmatched precision ensured its dominance in both the Islamic and Christian worlds during the Middle Ages, and it remained unchallenged until the heliocentric revolution of the Renaissance. By the time the 16th century rolled around, the Ptolemaic geocentric model had reigned supreme for over a millennium. However, a few discrepancies between its predictions and observational data started to become evident. The stage was set for a revolutionary change, and it was Nicholas Copernicus, a Polish mathematician and astronomer, 
who would ignite this transformation. Copernicus's groundbreaking work, De Revolutionibus Orbium Coelestium, on the revolutions of the celestial spheres, published in 1543, presented an entirely different view of the cosmos. Instead of Earth, Copernicus proposed that the Sun was at the center of the universe and that the planets, including Earth, revolved around it. This heliocentric model was simpler and more elegant than the Ptolemaic system, and most crucially, it could explain the observed motions of planets without the need for Ptolemy's complicated epicycles. The shift from an Earth-centered to a Sun-centered universe was not merely a scientific adjustment, it was a profound paradigm shift. By suggesting that Earth was not the central stage of the universe but just another planet orbiting the Sun, Copernicus challenged the prevailing philosophical and theological beliefs of his time. However, the immediate reception to Copernican heliocentrism was mixed. Many in the academic world were skeptical, mainly because the model still had its own set of complexities and did not yet provide a significantly better fit to observations than the Ptolemaic model. Additionally, this heliocentric idea ran counter to the established teachings of the Church, adding to the resistance. It was only with the subsequent work of astronomers like Johannes Kepler, who introduced elliptical orbits, and Galileo Galilei, whose telescopic observations provided concrete evidence for the heliocentric model, that the Copernican system gained wider acceptance, setting the stage for modern astronomy. Galileo Galilei, an Italian polymath, is often regarded as the father of observational astronomy. Born in the late 16th century, Galileo's work in the early 17th century would come to redefine our understanding of the cosmos and validate the heliocentric theories of Copernicus. The pivotal moment came with Galileo's pioneering use of the telescope for astronomical observations. While the telescope was not his invention, he significantly improved upon the designs he had seen, eventually achieving magnifications of up to 30 times. With this new tool in hand, he began to observe the heavens in ways that were previously impossible. One of Galileo's groundbreaking discoveries was the observation of four moons orbiting Jupiter, which he termed the Medicean stars but are now popularly known as the Galilean moons. This discovery was monumental for several reasons. Firstly, it provided direct evidence that not all celestial bodies orbit the Earth, a fundamental challenge to the geocentric model. Additionally, the fact that Jupiter had its moons suggested that the Earth's moon was not a unique entity, and other planets could also have satellites. Galileo's telescopic observations didn't stop there. He observed the phases of Venus, which provided strong evidence for the heliocentric model. In the geocentric model, Venus should only exhibit crescent phases, but Galileo observed it going through a full set of phases, much like the Moon, confirming that Venus orbits the Sun and not Earth. Furthermore, he observed the rough and cratered surface of the Moon, challenging the prevailing belief that celestial objects were perfect and unblemished spheres. His observations of sunspots further challenged the notion of the unchanging perfection of heavenly bodies. However, Galileo's vocal support for the heliocentric model and his empirical evidences brought him into conflict with the Roman Catholic Church. His discoveries were seen as a challenge to the established religious and philosophical views, leading to his infamous trial and house arrest. Nevertheless, the seeds of change had been planted. Galileo's observational evidences, combined with the theoretical work of contemporaries like Kepler, solidified the shift from a geocentric understanding of the cosmos to a heliocentric one, ushering in a new era in the annals of astronomy and science. In the grand narrative of the astronomical renaissance, Johannes Kepler and Sir Isaac Newton are luminous figures whose contributions transformed not just how we viewed the cosmos but the very essence of how we understood motion and force within it. Kepler, a German astronomer and mathematician, was a contemporary of Galileo. Building on the heliocentric model of Copernicus, 
Kepler aimed to address certain inconsistencies between the model's predictions and actual astronomical observations. His relentless pursuit of understanding led him to formulate the three laws of planetary motion. Kepler's first law, the law of ellipses this law, proposed that planets move in elliptical orbits with the Sun at one of the two foci. This was a significant departure from the previous belief in perfect circular orbits. Kepler's second law, the law of equal areas according to this, a line segment joining a planet and the Sun sweeps out equal areas during equal intervals of time. This implied that planets moved faster in their orbits when closer to the Sun and slower when farther away. Kepler's third law, the harmonic law This law relates the square of a planet's orbital period to the cube of its average distance from the Sun. It underlined a fundamental harmony governing the motions of all planets in the solar system. Kepler's laws provided a more accurate description of planetary motions than any model before and they paved the way for Newton's future work by emphasizing the importance of empirical data and mathematical description in understanding the cosmos. Building upon the groundwork laid by Kepler, Newton, an English mathematician, physicist, and astronomer, undertook the monumental task of explaining why the planets moved the way they did. His reflections and experiments on motion and force culminated in his laws of motion and the universal law of gravitation. In his seminal work, Philosophiae Naturalis Principia Mathematica, Newton proposed that every particle in the universe attracts every other particle with a force that is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. This law of universal gravitation not only explained why planets orbited the Sun but also accounted for phenomena like the tides on Earth. Newton's genius was in realizing and proving that the same forces and laws of motion applied both to terrestrial objects here on Earth and to celestial bodies in the heavens. This unification of the heavens and the Earth under the same physical laws was a radical idea and marked a seminal shift in scientific thought. Together, Kepler's empirical laws of planetary motion and Newton's theoretical framework provided a comprehensive understanding of the cosmos effectively bridging the gap between observation and the underlying fundamental principles governing the universe. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.